Hello there, so I've never done this before. I'm filming into a mirror, pretty weird. So this is a direct response to a comment I had today on my latest film about what I do in the mornings. And that's about the cat's claw, rose sip and honey tea drink that I have. So what we're looking at this afternoon is what I do to look after my teeth and gums. And I guess that's the first thing to realise, it's not just your teeth we're bothered about, we're bothered about the teeth and the gums as well. Really important to see them both equally important. And another thing that was a really big eye-opening moment for me was a couple of years ago when I tuned into one of these online webinar, seminar things, and it was all about just how incredibly important your teeth and your mouth is, and how the state of this part of your body actually affects everything else and I was really shocked to discover that for example heart attacks are often caused by long standing infection and decay in the gums and in the teeth and that led me right down the rabbit hole into a fascinating world and so what I do now is something that might seem a little bit off the wall at first but you're used to that because you've probably watched my films before so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take you straight through what I do. So I did actually take my mum out this afternoon, something to eat in the cafe and didn't have my teeth cleaning things with me, which I generally like to avoid, but sometimes it happens and it's happened for a reason because what I feel is if I've eaten anything that's got any sweetness in there, it's not quite right for my teeth. I start to feel a slight discomfort feeling like they need to be cleaned. They've been waiting for more than an hour, so here we go. So I'm going to start off with some hydrogen peroxide. So I'll do it and I'll tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So a gulp of hydrogen peroxide, keep it in the mouth. I'm glad we So that is step one of my let's keep my teeth and gums healthy for good. Hydrogen peroxide, well, I'm full, I'm full on about hydrogen peroxide, so I like to buy it like this, a nice five litre container of this stuff. Now in the UK, they've changed the rules, so the strongest hydrogen peroxide you can get is 12%. So what I need to do is I need to get 100 millilitres of that hydrogen peroxide and I put it into this jar and I fill the jar up with water so it's basically one part hydrogen peroxide three parts water and that takes it down from 12% to 3% which is just ideal so then I will fill my little container up from the jar and as you saw I just very lightly and gently and this is perhaps the most important thing to understand because if you have ever watched any film, doesn't matter what country the film is made in, it could be America, it could be Korea, it could be Japan, anywhere, what you get is a demonstration of how not to brush your teeth. So what you do is you see film actors, they get their brush like this and they go, put it in their mouth and they go like, and they're doing it really, really hard and really vigorously and really aggressively. And somehow people have been led to believe this is a good thing to do. It's a disaster in the making because what you're doing is you're literally attacking and battering the enamel on your teeth so the very first thing you learn to do is to brush it very gently but also you don't brush from side to side which is actually worse than useless what you do is you brush in a direction like this so it's you literally articulating your brush like that so just gently all the way around inside my mouth and I'm not just doing this with the teeth, I'm doing it with the gums that comes into contact with the teeth all the way around, outside and in, on the bottom, outside and in on the top. And then a quick rub like that on the tops of the teeth and then spit out. So what is so amazing about hydrogen peroxide? I'll tell you, it contains active oxygen. And so what it does, it's got the capacity to disinfect and clean your teeth 
and it's completely harmless because hydrogen peroxide breaks down to form water and oxygen and that's its cleaning disinfectant power so literally it fills the mouth with something which just cleanses in such a powerful way so that's the first thing that I do and I find if I'm in a situation I haven't got a lot of time or I'm traveling I can just do a quick really quick brush with peroxide like that and I can tell my mouth feels instantly whatever acids that were there in the food that I was eating they've been neutralized it's gone it's safe so that feels really great that's stage one now stage two is much more conventional it involves things like toothpaste so there's one called aloe dent and here's another one called kingfisher kingfisher has got activated charcoal in it now charcoal is a great decolorizer and also a wonderful cleansing agent in its own right when people get gut problems they often take activated charcoal tablets and that literally neutralizes any toxins in the gut so this is neutralizing any toxins in the teeth and whitening them as well and this one is great because it contains all sorts of interesting things including aloe vera which is obviously a very healing plant and it contains tea tree which actually is a very powerful thing to use in the teeth in the right dosage so you don't want to get neat tea tree oil and put it on the toothbrush and brush your teeth because that's going to be too strong if you wanted to go down the route of using an oil you'd have to dilute it with a carrier oil like almond oil but with this one i'm just using a toothpaste and here's the next thing i want to say about looking after your teeth don't use the same toothpaste change your toothpaste and i'm very grateful for the dentist in portugal because when i had problems with my mercury amalgam fillings and have them all removed it took me a year best thing i ever did got rid of long-term depression all sorts of things by doing that because mercury is a cumulative poison well he said i said to him so what toothpaste do you recommend he said to me what i recommend you do is you don't stick to one toothpaste you change your toothpaste so kingfisher aloe dent and toms of maine are three great toothpaste now here's the shocking news in the uk 99 percent of all toothpaste that you find contains sodium saccharin sodium monofluorophosphate which is basically brain poison and cancer genius uh, there's also acid sulfame k and aspartame so if you go into a supermarket in the uk and you're looking for toothpaste you're almost certain to find poisonous shit let's be frank so you go to your health food shop you go to an independent retailer and you get yourself something decent so well worth it so what i do with this is i now bring in the electric toothbrush so i do like to use electric toothbrush for this part of the process so today because it's a bit dramatic let's use a charcoal toothpaste so first thing you notice that's right it's black well of course it will because charcoal is black isn't it so i have least recently learned the really proper way to brush with an electric toothbrush so it's different from what i was showing with the manual so first of all don't put any water on it for virtually all my life i've been putting water on my toothbrush if you're using a wet toothpaste like this you don't need to if you're using a dry powder toothpaste that's so old-fashioned you might never even have heard of it well then that was why people used to put it under the tap so you don't put it under the tap and what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch it on and i'm going to move it very slowly and gently like this so you don't need to brush up like i need to do with the manual toothbrush with electric toothbrush i'm just literally riding it along my teeth all the way like this And 
And what's particularly good about this, and it looks a bit gross the first time, is you'll discover that when you are spitting and rinsing, some fairly gruesome black lumps come out, which is obviously the toothpaste little lumps of stuff. But it's really good because it has the capacity to grab hold of the bits of um, food remains in your mouth. So that works really well in its own right. So that was stage two, pretty conventional. So I want to really make this point clear to you because it's such a big learning lesson I've got. Basically for most of my life, I brushed my teeth vigorously and did damage to my enamel. So I'm a person with damaged enamel who's making darn sure I'm not doing it anymore. So again, when I did this, I'm just resting it on my teeth and just moving it gently because you don't need to put any pressure on, that's the old point. This is doing its work without the pressure. You can get modern electric toothbrushes, which have got a sensor, and if you press too wide, it will tell you, stop, pack it in, be more gentle. So that is your electric toothbrush. So that's stage two, fairly conventional. And then stage three, and to me, this is the bit that I get most excited about because it's gonna seem really weird. And the weirder the better, a shamanic view. So here we are, coconut oil. Now you can do oil pulling with coconut oil, but my extensive researchers have shown me that's not the best thing to do. Far better to do what I'm gonna do next. So I'm going to, that's it, coat the top of the toothbrush. I've got a different toothbrush. Yeah, the only person you might know who's got three toothbrushes. Well, there we are. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna treat the, my teeth with this coconut oil in the same way as I did with the peroxide. Really gentle brushing, and I'm gonna do this movement. So, now here's a really interesting bit. Whatever you do, do not spit your coconut oil into the sink. Because if you do so, it will block up your sink. If you feel you have to spit it, you want to spit it into a tissue, into the toilet, something like that, but not into the sink. It will going to cause you problems for certain. In fact, maybe it's not such a good idea spitting into the toilet, thinking about it. So coconut oil, it's antibacterial, antimicrobial. And what I'm doing is I'm coating not just my teeth, but my gums in an oil which has got so many healing properties that I ain't got time to spend li listing them all to you right now. So what I suggest you do is Google it yourself, research it yourself and find out about the amazing properties of coconut oil. When you do so, you'll realize, oh my goodness me, to actually finish whatever I do with my teeth with coconut oil, I can now tell you this, my teeth and my mouth feels fantastic because at first you might find the taste of coconut oil a little bit strong but what i suggest you do with all new things just do it do it do it give it a couple of weeks and then see how you feel because to me i love that taste now didn't do it first but i do now and it means that i've really bulletproofed my teeth and gums so i could have made this film some years ago and i didn't because First of all, it's taken me a lot of years of research to work out the best thing to do, come across all sorts of other things I'm not gonna tell you about, which seemed like a great idea at first, and actually problems. So, and if you go back, back into my, way back into my back catalog, you might find something about sodium bicarbonate. Don't recommend it because my holistic dentist in Portugal made clear to me that it's just too abrasive end up with problems with wearing away the enamel with sodium bicarbonate, so don't use it. Don't even use it with coconut oil, it's just too abrasive. So stick to the magic three, which is hydrogen peroxide, a toothpaste of your choice, which has not got no sugar, no saccharin, no fluoride, and that's the other point. Of course, fluoride is a brain poison. It actually damages the pineal gland, and only dentists who are completely brainwashed by their training have any good things to say about fluoride. Everybody else knows it's poison you don't want to touch with a barge pole. Absolutely not. No matter what your age you are, just don't go anywhere with the fluoride. It's a really important message. 
and then finish off with your coconut oil and so this is the reason I'm making the film. I'm making the film because over the last five years I've been regularly to my dentist and hygienist and what has happened is I've gone from a person that when the hygienist used to start working to clean my teeth I would be getting pocketing in the gums and I'd be bleeding and when she asked me to rinse I'd spit out and I'd spit out a load of blood because basically my gums were diseased. Well they aren't anymore I have still got gum recession, but there's no gum disease whatsoever because I've cured it by this system. And I do believe it's a combination of these three things, the peroxide, a safe toothpaste, and the coconut oil that does the magic. So both my dentist and hygienist last, but it says, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. In fact, hygienist says, you don't need to come to me so often. You can come a lot less often now because you've got this totally under control you have got a regime which works for you. So I'd be very interested to hear from you what works for you to keep your teeth and gums healthy because there's so much interesting information out there. It's always lovely to share. And thanks very much for watching. And if you feel inspired to give it a go, just see how you get on. Thank you very much.